we will cover the muscles of the upper extremities, at least some of them that we can see. We go into seeing the rotator cuffs. The subscap, the sub supraspinatus, here being the spine of the scapula, the posterior arm. The supraspinatus starts in the supraspinous fossa. And then what it does, it goes underneath the acromion process and it anchors into the greater tubercle, right on top of it actually. As its main uh, action, it helps support the glenohumeral joint by holding the humerus into the glenohumeral, into the glenoid uh, cavity. And it also helps us uh, adduct the arm. The infraspinatus is right on the bottom <coughs> of it. And it starts in the infraspinous fossa, and it anchors also in the, the greater tubercle of the um, uh, humerus. Besides holding the glenoid in to the, the humerus into the glenoid, it also laterally rotates or externally rotates the arm a little bit. Uh, lastly, on the back side here, we got the teres minor, and that's a small little muscle right next to the infraspinatus. And it comes from the in on the underside. We got one major muscle in here, and that goes from the subscapular fossa and anchors into the lesser tubercle of the humerus. And besides holding the glenoid in the humerus into the glenoid, this muscle does medial rotation of the arm. The serratus anterior is not visible, but it starts right in here, and we can visualize the ribs coming right through here and the serratus anterior anchors into the rib cage on each rib and it looks like a serrated knife if you look at from the side. And that's a muscle that anchors the scapula onto the chest. Very important for upper uh, body stability, upper extremity stability. Muscle back in the deltoid starts at the anterior sort of third of the clavicle, the acromion process, and then the spine of the scapula and it inserts into the deltoid tuberosity on the humerus. That muscle mainly does A, B adduction of the arm, as in this, or in my arm, of course, it's this function. It works together with the supraspinatus because the deltoid has a very unfortunate angle and it can't really do the initial lifting. It will just jam it into, jam the humerus into the glenoid uh, or into the acromion that way. So the supraspinatus helps a little bit and then the deltoid can take over. So that's kind of cool. We have two muscles we cannot see on the arm model, so we go to the chest model. Uh, that first one is the pectoralis major muscle that starts right here in the rib, the sternum, and some of the clavicle, and then when you go, it anchors into the intertubercular groove, and it medially rotates the arm a little bit, but it definitely adducts the arm. Around we go to the back side. And we can't make it out that well, but we have a little bit right in here. We see this muscle here is cut off. This muscle comes down and anchors into the iliac crest, the thoracolumbar fascia. Also, the spinous process is all the way up to T7. And then it inserts into the intertubercular groove of the humerus as well. And that most, mostly extends the arm, as we can see in swimmers. And swimmers often have this powerful muscle back here. And that's the latissimus dorsi that we can see. Now let's go into some muscles that move the um, shoulder as well as then the elbow joint. First one is a small one I want to go in. It's the, cor the coracobrachialis starts at the coracoid process of the scapula in the front. That's right here. And it anchors into the front of the shaft of the humerus. So it's this liver of the muscle. This liver. Its main uh, action is, 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 is flexion of the arm. The next one we have is the biceps brachii, and the biceps brachii has two heads. A short head that goes into the coracoid process, and a long head that actually goes into the supraglenoid tubercle. That's in the glenoid. And then they both anchor into the radial tuberosity in the radius. Now this muscle, as we can imagine, it flexes the arm or the elbow, the forearm or the elbow, but it also does flex the arm a little bit and brings it up this way. So it helps together with the coracobrachialis here. Taking this muscle out, look at this, we have a fat muscle on the knees and that's the brachialis, that's also the shaft of the humerus. 
and then it goes down and anchors right into the proximal ulna. Proximal ulna. Guess what that also does? It also does a lot of the flexion of the arm. The biceps brachii, the way it's anchored in the radial tuberosity, it also helps with supination uh, because it brings the radius uh, over, back over and straightens it out next to the ulna so it lays parallel. That's supination. In the back, we have one massive muscle, and that's our triceps brachia. The triceps brachia has three heads. It starts, one of them, the long one, starts at the infraglenoid tubercle of the glenoid, so not on top of the glenoid, but at the bottom of the glenoid. And then the other two start at the shaft of the humerus. And then they all anchor into the olecranon process of the elbow, which is the elbow proper, so to speak, right here at the tip. And that muscle, guess what? It extends the arm or the forearm or the elbow. So that's an extension muscle. The muscle back here, we have to talk about real brief because that's the teres major, not the teres minor, the teres major muscle. And that's a helper of the uh, latissimus dorsi. It starts, originates at the inferior angle of the scapula and anchors into the infra, uh, into tubercular groove together with the latissimus dorsi. And it has its same action. It's a synergist of it. So it extends the arm. Now we're going into this segment here, the forearm. The forearm, we have one major muscle here that we can see that's right in the midline and going into the thumb. That here is the brachioradialis muscle. The brachioradialis muscle starts at the lateral distal end of the humerus and it anchors into the styloid process of the radius. It mainly oops, flexes the forearm. It helps with that motion. So it helps with the muscles up here, actually, even though it appears down here. For us, it's an important muscle, but it's also a good landmark right in the midline. So now what we want to do is we want to go to the front of the forearm. And if the front of the forearm, we have the flexor muscles. For our purposes, they all start at the medial epicondyle of the humerus. So look at this. Ne next to the brachioradialis, we have the one that sort of goes a little cross, then one that goes down to the thumb, then one that goes down to the palm, and I want one that goes down to the pinky. They all start at the medial ep lateral epiconda, medial epiconda. They all start at the medial epiconda. First one is the pronator teres. It goes into the radius. And that muscle, when it contracts, it pronates the arm, forearm. Then the next one is the flexor carpi radialis, flexor in the front, carpi for the wrist, radialis on the thumb side, which is the radius. And it goes from the medial epicondyle and anchors into the thumb side of the carpals. Main action, flexion of the wrist. A little bit of this, which is abduction. And then the palmaris longus starts at the medial epicondyle, goes right into the palm of the hand, actually the flexor retinaculum. That literally just flexes your palm like this. But when you do, when you do this, the tendon you can see here, when you do this, the tendon you can see here, that's the flexor, that's the palmaris longus tendon. Lastly here on the side, oh, excuse me. Lastly on the side we have the flexor carpi ulnaris, is the pinky side, so Flexor in the front, carpi for the wrist, all there is on the pinky side. Starts at the medial epicondyle, goes into the carpals on the pinky side. Good. But then let's look at the back. The back's a little complicated. Look at all the stuff here. But this is the place, number 19. This is the place that is the brachial radialis. And for our purpose, they pretty much all start at the lateral epicondyle. So the flexor, extensor carpi, the extensor carpi radialis starts at the lateral epicondyle and basically goes into the carpals on the thumb side. And then we do not worry about this long muscle here, this muscle with all these tendons, because that's the extensor digitorum, which I left out. But next to it, on the pinky side, we have the extensor carpi ulnaris. Again, lateral